screws loose, let them strip the bolts on them. Should have never sent them to pick up the work for them. Spray the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on him. Said if he wasn't in the rush, they was all gone. His tech curse on the jets, he was all right. Greetings, Chudlings. Welcome to another episode of Chuddy's Corner. Uh, got the band back together for another live show to cap off the West Coast road trip. Celtics cap off the West Coast road trip with a 123-107 win over the Utah Jazz. Jason Tatum, the slump continues with a 38-point night for Jason Tatum. Uh, we're here to break down the game for you guys. Uh, before we do that, uh, do a little bit of the house cleaning stuff. Make sure you're following the show at Chuddy's Corner on all social media platforms. Make sure wherever you listen to your podcast, you've hit that like, subscribe button, leave a review, leave a comment, uh, and also make sure you're checking out chuddyscorner.com. Leave a voicemail for us. We had a voicemail we're going to dive into later on tonight, too. Um, but we love getting those voicemails from our fans. Uh, and also, special shout-out to our sponsor, Nick Prano Real Estate. Uh, NickPrano.com. Make sure you're checking Nick out. Uh, for all your real estate needs, he's got you covered. He's the man to talk to if you're looking to buy or sell a house in this area or if you're looking to start a rival Celtics broadcast. Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. He was over here at the Chuddy Dome earlier making this all possible, helping set this up. The camera, we got the spotlights with the mics. It's all yeah. it's all happening now. It's beautiful so. stuff. So shout out to Nick. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and dive uh, right into this one again. Like I said, Celtics 123-107 win. Um, this one... Again, was sort of a bit of a roller coaster up and down. It was one of the games, again, I never really thought that they were going to lose the game, but they sure did like to make it a little interesting. <laughs> um, so I'll pass it over to you, Chud. Why don't you go ahead and give us the recap of how this game played out? Yeah, this game played out, I thought, similarly to last night's game for any Chuddy heads who stayed up for both. I'm sure they saw the similarities. It seemed like almost a continuation to an extent. Tonight we had no Porzingis again, also no Al, no Jalen Brown, so we got starter Luke Cornett and starter Peyton Pritchard into Beautiful. the lineup. And, um, you know, we talked last night. If ever there was going to be a game where this team would maybe fall into a trap, have a letdown, uh, show up flat, come out flat, anything like that, tonight would be the night. It was mentioned the last leg of a five-game road trip in Utah, tough city to play in, on a back-to-back, traveled in the middle of the night last night. Jazz, a ton of rest, haven't played since Saturday. They got Danny Ainge yelling in there. They got Will Hardy yelling on their ear. You know, this game means a lot to them. <laughs> And just not the case. I mean, the Celtics, pure class. Tatum could have sat this one out. He suits up along with White and Drew. They go out, set the tone right away, uh, going to Tatum. They're switching smaller guys onto him. He's going right at them, right to the hole, attacking mismatches. Uh, just like straight bully ball, you could tell. He was not <laughs> going to be denied. Hit a couple threes, little everything. I think uh, partially, you know, the no Jalen, he's usually kind of like the first quarter tone setter. So it seemed like yeah. Tatum took that on himself. A little more aggressive right out of the gate. Uh, pushed this out. It was like a seven, eight point lead almost right away. Uh, Keontae George, who I mentioned last night, one of my favorite rookies in the league. He was an absolute flamethrower in the first quarter, really keeping the jazz in it. They were kind of scoring with us. Again, it kind of reminded me of last night's game in Portland where it felt like we were playing a little better and shooting a little better, but also the jazz were a little better and giving a little more resistance back to us. <laughs> but um, otherwise, very similar game. The bench guys, Luke in the start. I mean, he was starting tonight, but Luke was amazing. Like a dominant force on he both ends of the court. He is amazing. <laughs> He's just really, <laughs> he really, just really good. good. <laughs> um, but I mean, you go up and down the list. Uh, Hauser, another great night. He had four threes in the first half. I don't know if he had a ton in the second, but uh, more great shooting from him. Pritchard was hitting his shots. He came in. Well, he started also, I guess. Played really well. Um, the ex, the exterminator, Xavier Tillman, some really good minutes, doing a little bit of everything. He hit a couple corner threes tonight. He's playing good defense, setting some good screens, uh, operating out of the short roll. He put the ball on the deck a couple times, made some nice passes. So good to see him get some real minutes um, and have some real nice production too. Another team, just like last night, Utah, really poor defending in transition. And kind of you could see anytime the Celtics got to stop, push the ball, they were getting out, they were getting good looks, um, scoring really easily. And again, making some more shots tonight. Derek White, uh, big bounce back game. Not that he hasn't been playing well, but he really had it tonight. I think he had seven or eight threes. He was yeah, I absolutely think he was feeling seven it. Seven for ten. He was seven for ten at was one point. Crazy? I don't know if he shot. No, he was at one point on three. I don't know if he shot another one, but he was awesome. Uh, Drew, I think I was on kind of near triple double watch. Peyton, I just mentioned with the points. Luke was great. But, Cornette um, was on near triple double watch. Yeah. There's dishing it exactly. So everyone was getting in there. Brissett was giving him good minutes. It was it was truly a team effort. But again, it was it was Tatum and and White and Drew to the most part leading the charge, the guys you'd expect. Um, you know, when your leader goes out, like I said, all those things I mentioned, how this could be a trap game, when your leader and your best player goes out and sets the tone on both ends the way Tatum does, 
that's just, you know, every single guy sees that, every guy's going to step up, and there's not going to be a letdown, and that was the case. So Celtics were playing really well, doing all the things they needed to. Um, <clears throat> like you said, it was – they never really were blowing them out. I think they got up maybe as much as almost 20, but they were never really up by, like, fewer than six or eight points. The Jazz, much yeah. like last night, it seemed like they were never really getting within arm's reach um, until finally – Late third quarter, Jazz did start going on a run. They had a 12-2 to two run. It was um, George hit a couple, Sexton, Chris Dunn. They have a lot of kind of like dogs, like I mentioned, guys who have kind of bounced around the yeah. league, and you could tell, but they're like real vet professionals. And um, Jordan Clarkson, who had a few shots in a row. Next thing you know, they cut the lead 93-91 to 91 with uh, <laughs> seconds to go in the third. Two-point game out of nowhere. And I'm th- thinking finally, you know, are the legs starting to catch up to us, this, that, whatever. Joe calls a timeout. Right yeah. out of the timeout, Celtics do their pad. Did two for one. Tatum hits the three. Uh, Jazz bring it down for the last Sh- possession. Should have gone. Uh, there should have been a four point play too. But I thought he was yeah. going to get a quick T after that too. The he, way was, he was looking uh, at that ref. Just almost laughing at the refs by the end of the game about some of the non calls. But yeah, uh, he was bullying them. So that's what happened. But anyway, hit the two for one three. Then Celtics get a steal. Drew Holiday gets a layup. So it was a quick five zero run to close the quarter. And then the Celtics came out in the fourth quarter, and it was another one of those surges where they're just like turned it on for. Um, Five minutes. It ended up being a 20-0 run from that start of the third quarter yeah. on. The Jazz literally didn't score until there were five start and of the a half. Fourth. fourth. Uh, yeah, start of the fourth. End of the third. Start of the fourth. The Jazz did not score the first six and a half minutes of the fourth quarter. Absolute stifling defense. Multiple blocks. Uh, Derek White was putting on a show with some of the defensive plays he was making. Celtics were getting it going on offense again. It was Tatum kind of taking back over. That's how he got up to those 38 points. Very efficient. I think he shot 13 of 25. He was hitting his threes, but a ton of it was just being aggressive. Going right to the hoop, uh, just straight up overpowering them, honestly. Uh, Drew hit back-to-back threes at one point. White had a step-back three. They really just all had it going, and it was just another example where it's like, all right, we're going to turn this one on. Like, they could have kind of, um, you know, come out slow, let the Jazz hang around, made it a game down the stretch, and said they went the other way. They're like, we're going to finish this road trip in style. Six, seven-minute burst of everything they had, 20-0 to run, just completely overmatched them. <laughs> awesome way to end the road trip. I uh, just couldn't have asked for much more, and then uh, – just kind of coasted out the last five minutes of there and cruised to another comfortable business-like win in um, what's to me super impressive fashion. I mean, these are the ones, like I said, that, you know, nobody's up for them. They're not going to make the championship DVD, but just absolute taking care of business, like championship type of type of habits that you're seeing from this team. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, again, like you were just sort of saying, like this isn't a game that, uh, like, you don't want to like be like, bragging too much about just like beating the Jazz or whatever. But I do think when you factor in a lot of the other stuff with the guys who are out, in fact, there was a second night of a back-to-back. But literally, this game, they're halfway in the middle of this game, and there's less than 24 hours from when their last <laughs> yeah. game started. So it's like it was pretty just impre- impressive to do that, especially in uh, Utah where it is like, you know, they say like, I don't know, the altitude. I don't know exactly what it is above sea level. but they're it's like definitely 4,200 feet. So that Almost mean, a mile. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. That's, that's, pretty, high. that's pretty high. For reference, there. Denver's 5,280 feet. Yeah. Utah's 42-something. And I don't think there's another team in the league over 1,200. Yeah. And so, Boston's like literally zero, I yeah, think we're right there, <laughs> three. But yeah, so but I think I think I just saw a stat in the post game. The Celtics are nine and two um, on back to backs, and the second night of a back to back. That's just like an insane stat. That again, I think you know you don't want us to be sitting here like, oh yeah, we just like kind of took it to the Jazz because that's not that impressive. But I do think kind of the fact that they've overcome a lot of things on these uh, back to backs, as judged by that stat right yeah. there. Um, again, and I wonder it's habits. It's just good habits. If this was maybe at least one of the only uh, back-to-backs where neither Al nor Porzingis, Porzingis played. Yeah. Usually, it's one of the others. So tonight, to not have either, Luke slides in and <laughs> didn't miss a beat. <laughs> Luke is like he's like I know I know people and, and obviously Tillman got a lot of run tonight. But I and know that there's too. there's some nights where like Cornette's playing. And everyone's like, "Wow, we traded for Tillman." I know he's like a shiny new toy, but Luke is freaking nasty. Like it's yeah. it's it's crazy. The, what what that guy can do and just the fact that he just does it just so like unathletically looking it's just so impressive it's a, no, it he's all, it's it's really fun to watch that guy play yeah. and make and make some plays he's he had gone. some like huge alley oop too i was right? gonna say yeah. there was a play i was gonna talk about how good the ball movement was in the first half and that play maybe more than ever um as tatum drew the double team had a perfect bounce pass down to drew at the dunker spot drew probably could have laid it in and said he threw an amp- Vicious alley oop to Cornette, <laughs> um, and Cornette reached like way behind his head awesome. and threw it like, the fuck down. So, that thing after down. last night's putback dunk, and this one tonight is like 
who is this guy? I think um, Cornette might need, need to be in the dunk contest next impressive. year. That'd be absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, we know he's got the celebration aspect now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he would bring a certain something to the dunk contest yeah. that I think is. I think everyone's wondering how do you make the dunk contest better. It might just be having like large, unathletic yeah, yeah. white Luke Cornette go out there I and do hate that. that. He could that save could be contest. incredible. I think tonight, if ever, I'm not a meme guy, but if there was an, uh, a meme that was coming to mind tonight, it was like. A picture of Porzingis and Al, and then like the I think it's a Toby McGuire like rubbing his glasses and then looking again at Luke and uh, Tillman. <laughs> okay, like, that's talk, a good I mean, one. Mental note for the people. Talk about the way they here. filled in, like did not miss a beat and doing a lot of those guys, the things that those guys do. And yeah. um, you know, obviously, I didn't realize that Tillman had three pointers. Like I didn't realize oh, yeah. that was a thing that he could <laughs> he's do. He's gonna shoot open court. Three, that's sure. awesome. Yeah, he's he's a very well rounded game. Like he might not be amazing at everything at anything, but he's like pretty good at a lot of things. Uh, yeah. Great to have a versatile guy like that, and he's he's big. He's not getting moved much, so yeah. just another good option for us to have. Who seems like, you know, I think we both really liked what Kata was giving us, but Kata out there at times looked like he was like the baby giraffe. He's like, raw. Yeah, yeah, he's raw. He's which raw. is fine, but when you're trying to win a title, it's nice to have someone out there like Tillman who you put out, and you can just tell, like, okay, this guy, you know, we can count on exactly what he's going to do. He's like a very, very solid player. So uh, just great to see us really not miss a beat. And again, the one place where you could look at this matchup and say, um, like, ooh, do the Jazz have an advantage is down low. Walker Kessler, absolute monster on the glass, amazing yeah. rebounder. John Collins for a power forward, really big too. So you look at this team and you're just thinking, like, got absolutely stuffed, stuffed by Derek. Yeah, Kelly too. well, right. But you're looking at just on paper the guys we have out and the guys they have and thinking, like, ooh, are we going to be able to compete on the boards? And we absolutely held our own. Like, you wouldn't have known that well, if you just watched tonight's game, you'd think that, like, Luke and Tillman could be. A- Solid one two punch. Yeah, I mean, we out rebounded them 46 to 38. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, and um, that was a concern. We certainly and Tatum. I mean, Tatum played huge tonight. Like, so many of his hoops were around the basket. Again, just picking out mismatches, dominating, and playing that way, you know, rebounding and defensively, too. Just playing like a big man. And there's so many times now, I mean, he does this a lot, but it was, I thought, very noticeable tonight without Porzingis. It was like Tatum was kind of taking on the Porzingis role of pick and popping, where he'd be the guy setting the screen and jumping out. And he was getting a lot of open three-point looks uh, early in the game doing that. So, again, just the versatility of this team and the willingness to, like, each guy to do whatever needs to be done is just absolutely crazy. And, again, yeah. it all trickles down from the star player, Tatum, who Eddie went on a little tangent, which was perfect in the middle of the game, just saying how, like, he does not care how many shots he gets. He started off super hot. I think he had like 15 points in the first quarter, and yeah. then he was happy to just sit back because the other guys were cooking, and we were like stretching out the lead. And he's like, how many stars wouldn't try to go get the ball and like impose this back on and be like, I'm hot. I want to go for 40, whatever. And I mean, he still got his 38 points, but like only 23 shots without those other guys. He easily could have come out tonight, gun for 50. I don't think yeah. anyone would have complained or thought it was selfish or anything like that. No, he's it was just a like, perfect I'm not. opportunity to kind of bounce the right back play. from like the – you know, any of like, I know he's sort of the MVP conversation, right or wrong, is sort of simmered out a little bit of with a road trip, but, but it's right. Again, he's slumping. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think he, he this could have easily been a night where he just kind of goes out and gets his, but, but no, he, like he the ball picked the spots. Like when he, when he needed to take over, which is something we've been saying that we like to see him do, like at yep. times, it's good to be passive, but it's also good at sometimes be like, okay, well, hold on. I am the best player here. <laughs> um, let me just yeah. take over. And I think he did that. You mentioned too, um, uh, Drew Holiday, obviously the alley oop to to Cornette, but he had eight assists tonight yeah. too. So it's good to see Drew kind of moving the ball on and sort of yeah. playing that role yeah. um, as like a facilitator. Again, he's just a guy. It's crazy. Like he just feels like he can do as little or as much as or mm-hmm. as like mo- like more that you need. Like depending on what, whatever the situation calls for. Like if you need him to just go out there and play like crazy defense and shoot like four shots in a win, he's yeah. like more than willing to do that. If he has to go out there and facilitate now, he can do that while still also playing, like, insane defense. Yep. Um, so I just think, like, Drew is another guy that where it's just, like, <laughs> he's not jumping off because he's not jumping off the page or anything because, you know. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to. But but it's, like, his fingerprints are all over so many of these games yeah, and so many of these big wins. So. And his level of sacrifice is, I mean, I think everyone on the team has sacrificed to an extent. But Drew, people forget how much he was running the show last yeah. year for the Bucks. Like, a really good team. He was an all-star. He was shooting, I think, almost 20 shots, like, scoring 20 points a game and he's happy to just sit back and you know shots here and there but for the most part he's just a kind of a distributor a connector he's playing out of the dunker spot which is just like crazy he's like the afterthought (laughs) on offense and basically the only looks he gets are like wide open or just when a guy way too small is trying to guard him in the post i know and it's the highest percentage shot almost just like lulling like seems like well he's not part of the offense but it's like he can be like he could easily he was the number two guy on the bucks team just you know one year ago right 
So shout out to the Bucks again. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's just like Seriously. that just never doesn't stop being right. funny that they cut him and then we immediately or not cut him, they traded him and we immediately just like, well, we'll yeah. take him. Like, <laughs> um, so shout out to Drew. Shout out to I think the starters too. We opened it up. I think rightfully so with some of those bench guys that came in, especially the bigs. But um, you know, I think it all kind of it, it trickles down. Um, from just the way that the starters come into these games and are willing to, again, sac- they're willing to make sacrifices for everyone else too. So mm-hmm. um, just like an awesome, again, sort of team <laughs> win in a, in a, again, a difficult just sort of situation per se, not so right. much like game. I think that this was a game they're probably pretty huge favorites despite having the guys out uh, and being. I mean, it was single digits. but Really? Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. But uh, no, I mean, just again. Also, sorry to the Chuddy Heads. I did not get a Chuddy Bar out. So I got to go oh, hand up. Oh, jeez. I go hand up. Um, <laughs> like I said, uh, we're still working on getting Chuddy's corner to turn a profit. So <laughs> I did. I was at a uh, another uh, employment, another oh, job. So uh, sadly, missed out on the Chuddy Bar parlay. <laughs> so that means that we're just going to have to go double on that. So it's a for, push, push on the night. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that's a good call. Yeah, we're going to go with that. It's a push. So if you've been controlling the Chuddy Bar, you didn't lose any money tonight. So that's awesome. Carry those ones over two units on the next one. Exactly. So yeah, we're feeling actually pretty good now. That's a great spin zone. I actually feel great <laughs> with the Chuddy Bar now. Um, but yeah, night without losing the Chuddy Bar. Chuddy Bar <laughs> did not lose yeah. tonight. But um, no, also on Drew Holiday, like you said, even you know today, obviously we had guys out, so I think he was a little more involved than usual. But it was mm-hmm. like a perfect example. He was kind of just sitting back picking his spots, and then when the Celtics went on that 20-0 run, other guys were hot, and sure enough, here comes Holiday, steps into a wide-open three, next possession, Tillman gets an old board, kicks it out, another Drew three, um, and that was like the dagger, and it's just, it's got to be such a backbreaker and just so demoralizing for these teams. Again, you're doing everything in your power to stop Tatum, then White gets going, you're doing everything in your power to stop him, and then it's like, oh yeah, Drew Holiday's still here. Uh, yeah. You know, guy who it's, who's at clutch shots on like a title winning team, and he'll just step in and like, just let him, just let him uncontested. So. Yeah. Like, it's we're like, fucked. We've said so many times, pick your poison, and it really is, even with <laughs> three very good players out, we're still, everyone we're putting out there is giving us just like awesome minutes. It's hard to even like, Go up and down the list of every guy who played tonight from, you know, Brissett, Hauser, whoever. Brissett. And that guy's just such a motor. It's so, <laughs> it's so, he it's had great. one rebound where, it, or no, I think you it was. You can tell he's going to get the rebound, like as soon as the ball yeah. hits the back rim. The <laughs> rebound I am like, thinking of though, I believe it was actually Tillman. Mm. Um, but there was like one where he literally jumped and it was like, it was like monstrous, yeah. the, the rebound, so. The Tillman and um, Brissett together, that's like some the Bash brother. <laughs> yeah, that's like, I feel like that would so be like, energy. it almost like feels like, do you ever play the video game Death Jam, like Fight Vendetta, <laughs> like yes. Fight for New York? I feel like those guys like out there, it's like almost like, a, they're like better suited for like that. Like they could do like a crossover of like 2K yeah. and like Def Jam. Those, those guys, that would be so brutal to have to be covering, um, having those guys out there just absolutely <laughs> whooping your ass. Yeah. Um, so yeah, shout out to those guys. Everyone stayed ready, and when the time came, they were absolutely ready. So it was a thing of beauty. Um, do you? What do you? Um, do you have anything else from this game? I had a couple of things that were like adjacent to this game. But. So yeah, I had a few things. I guess from this game, just littler things with like the announcers and funny little things yeah, yeah. I noticed. Um, so first, I thought it was just a hilarious moment. Really, like kind of sums up the whole game. And it was right at the beginning. It was one of the first possessions. It really set the tone. Um, Tatum, we got, like, the ball tipped away. Tatum was kind of driving, and I think Keontae George was there, who's obviously a lot smaller than him. Um, and I think, I want to say it was maybe Sensabaugh was, like, behind him. And Tatum's driving, and again, he's, like, driving a one-on-two, one-on-three, and Drew Carter just, like, uh, no numbers for Tatum. And then silence, and Tatum just, like, <laughs> takes one step right at George and just dunks right <laughs> over both of them. And he's just like, and it doesn't matter. Okay, it was just okay. like, okay, it's going to be that kind of night. I think it was, like, one of the first few sessions of the game. It was like, all right, that was awesome. Yeah. Um. So that was cool. Again, we haven't talked about, d- dug in much to uh, challenge philosophy lately. Yeah, but yeah. we were talking about a lot about it earlier in the year. I thought it was interesting uh, Will Hardy challenged a foul on a Tatum three in the first quarter. Uh, it was very early into the game. So he lost the challenge and he thought it was dumb that he didn't really check. He just listened to Keontae George who immediately signaled for it. But this is one where I would say generally, it, assuming you actually trust the player and know you're going to win it, I'm okay with challenging there because it's a direct change of three points. So to me, it's like, it doesn't matter the point in the game. If you can take three points off the board, like yeah. that's the max value basically you can get on a challenge. So I'd be okay with it. Obviously, if you want to go back, but I think a lot of people are like, why are you challenging the first quarter? But if it's a direct three points and I don't know if they would have got the rebound, whatever, but it's like, I'm weirdly okay with that challenge. Even though we obviously lost it. Um, 
But it is what it is. <laughs> but like, if he had won it, if it worked out, though, yeah, I mean, you got to you got to know you're right. But in general, I like challenging right, plays like that are directly yeah, 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 taking yeah. points, it's like, like a system play. Yeah, exactly. Um, other speaking of challenging, a ton of mention of Matt Reynolds and uh, referring the to him as the Green Lantern tonight. That, yeah. You're saying that multiple times. Yeah, Eddie, I gotta get Eddie a loved picture of Matt of that guy, <laughs> and I definitely that that's a meme that's common for the people. Yeah, Eddie thought Eddie thought that was hilarious. Um, it was also they had an an Abby interview where she was talking with uh, she caught up with Isaiah Thomas, who's obviously signed to the Jazz. That's, that was one of the team. things I wanted to bring up, and yeah. I thought it was cool that uh, he said that Danny Ainge like sought him out and basically helped him get back into the league, gave him the chance. So. All the people out there think Danny, you know, kicked dirt on Isaiah's grave and stabbed him in the back and hates him. <laughs> You've heard it from the horse's mouth, Isaiah saying uh, that Danny, you know, is, is helping him out big time and they're tight. He said it's I all over. I, I don't think Danny, I don't think people ever thought that Danny hated Isaiah. I think it was that people probably thought IT hated Danny. Well, I don't know. They, sure they thought that the like Celtics, a... like, screwed him over and yeah. like, did him dirty. Whatever. The whole thing has always been nonsense. Yeah. Um, and Isaiah also said that it's all love. In Boston, the fans still love him. He loves them. He said he still talks to the Jays on the reg, keeps up with the team. So uh, I thought that was funny. Especially, I don't did he even play with Tatum? He was never even on the team together, right? No, <laughs> but sure he was, that's what yeah. you said. I don't know. I I heard that same quote. And I did think the same thing. I was like, huh, that's a little strange. I love Isaiah. Obviously, I always will. That you know, we'll Me never too. forget that season. But he's become Magic. like almost a tragic character where it's almost like cringeworthy sometimes. <laughs> How hard it seems like he's trying to be like, yeah, like, yeah, like I'm I'm still part of that crew. It's like. Dude, like, were you ever? So, <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know my, my thing is, like, and I'm weird. glad that he's, like, back and, like, Same. playing in the G League. Absolutely. But it's, like, do, I don't know. Like, do you think that, like, him going out and dropping, like, 35 points a night in the G League is, like, what, like, T's going to be like, oh, we got to. No. I feel like, yeah. I feel like <laughs> it's not. No, I don't. Like, if you're some of those younger players in that team, you you might you might hate him. You might be like, dude. Yeah. He's just taking a spot from them. I think this is. I don't mean, even mean that. I just mean, like, he's well, just the way he's just, sh- how much he's shooting. Like, I don't. Him having a roster spot is one thing. I just feel like with how much he's putting up, and I, I don't watch. I don't watch it, so I don't know if it's just like crazy ball that he's playing. Or maybe he's playing within the system. I mean, he's only played like two games. But, yeah, but um, I mean, I'm glad to see him back out there, though. Shout out, absolutely. To and he, he will always. It yeah. seems like he go out in any game and get offense if that's what. It was just so silly how small he was and how easily he was scoring. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy no, I mean, looking umbe- back on that. Uh, whole... Truly an unbelievable season all around. But um, like I said. Good for him. Happy for him. I just thought um, it's been a little cringe worthy watching him uh, beg for jobs on Twitter mm. for six years. Well, I'm glad he finally had it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just hopefully so he will stop complaining about it, I guess, if nothing else. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then um, in the fourth quarter, Drew Garter was just putting on a show. It was like an absolute nickname clinic. He <laughs> yeah, dropped uh, <laughs> Lord of the Rim for Cornette. Oh, He busted wow. out the Exterminator. Yep. He hit the Stock Exchange. Uh, he made a curb reference with the pretty, pretty good. So he was like, oh, wow. it was like old school, like sports center, like uh, Stu Scott days with all, he was doing like a one liner, like every other line. Yeah. yeah. RIP, absolutely. But uh, it was just fun. It was like, wow. Like these are like some heat checks from like Drew Carter. He just had, it was, he's, he's probably, yeah, he's a he's, great, he had last day of the road trip. He's last chance yeah, in a exactly. while. Like he's yeah, not, yeah. you know, so yeah. and he knows the playoffs are coming up. Like his, his run's getting out. So he's emptying the clip. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was a good job by Drew. Funny <laughs> stuff. Um, and then the only other thing, it wasn't really the announcers, I guess, but they mentioned uh, Luka Samanic, who is on the Jazz, um, and he was on the Spurs for a while. He was in the Celtics G League team for a bit. He had a cup mm-hmm. of coffee with the Celtics, I think, this last offseason. Uh, and no pun intended, because I say that because uh, Drew brought up a story. He's friends with, I guess, the main Celtics announcer, and they had talked and shared some stories, and somehow it came out that Luka drinks his coffee with Coca-Cola. Like instead of milk, I think I guess he mixes coffee and coke. So what? I thought I was a sicko. Uh, I will one hundred percent be trying coffee, this. Like, I was om- almost went and made a pot of coffee because I think I have a can of coke in the fridge. Uh, I will one hundred percent do a Chuddy's Corner uh, coffee review. Coffee review. Coffee and coke review. That would be sh- look for that tweet so, coming uh, out. We're gonna have to do and, the. You know they were kind of laughing and Drew said, "Don't knock it till you try it." I won't. So I will absolutely try it. I will record myself making and tasting it and. Uh, we will set that up somehow through the <laughs> Chuddy's Corner channel. I like that so if you're following lot, along, yeah. and, uh, and who knows if I, I might be converted. I'm I'm a diehard coffee drinker. All hours of the day, love coffee. So just instead Can't of milk, he's it. putting he puts. Coke they didn't in exactly it. explain the details. Maybe I'll tweet out at Lucas see if he'll share some of his secrets with me. But I mean, that's, the recipe. <laughs> I'm assuming it's kind of. I don't know if it's an even mix. Like, yeah, I, I, if he, any more information anyone can give me, the better. I'll, I'll incorporate it. But I'll 
experiment on my own. I'll get you know some science lab beakers going, <laughs> find the right oh, that'd uh, be great, yeah. the right balance. But I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, for that. Yeah, I like trying new things like that. <laughs> Shout out the love sponsor. Coffee. We need a lab coat now love too. Coca-Cola, so <laughs> yeah, this uh, this could be huge. This could be huge. All right, <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah, I thought so. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, look out for that. Uh, shout out to yeah, shout out to Drew. I do. It, it is. I don't know exactly how many road games we have left, but it has been. It has been a great season uh, with him along for the ride. Yeah, so. and you can tell um, he's waxing a little poetic at the end too, because you know his run's coming to an end. But he started talking a little out of pocket about the championship, uh, saying how appropriate it was the way they were playing for Gorman's uh, last yeah. year, and then saying that he wanted a seat next to him in the tuck bowl. I'm like, all right, Drew. Like, yeah, all right. Pump slow the brakes just a bit. I'm all like, all on board with everything you're saying, but <laughs> I don't know if we want to put that one out in the universe right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, yeah. So, uh, that's uh pretty much the recap for this game. We do have, I mentioned, we do have a voice one that we wanted to play. Uh. So before we get into that, just our uh, final score again: Celtics uh, take on this one against the Jazz, one twenty three to one oh seven. Tatum the high score. He had uh, thirty eight points. Uh, we also had uh, Derek White, 24 points, six rebounds. Uh, Drew Holiday, 16 points, five rebounds. We mentioned the eight assists. Mm. Cornette, 12 points, nine rebounds, six assists. Like I said, he's almost a triple double yeah, wow. watch. Six assists. There you go. He's doing it. He can do it all. It's it's pretty impressive stuff. <laughs> uh, Pritchard had 10 points. Tillman had seven points, eight rebounds. So there was just, just a lot of people out there getting really some buckets effort. and things like that and getting some oh, rebounds. Yeah. So Dallas team win. Love it, love it, love it. All right, we have a voicemail. Uh, our friend Joe from the North Shore gives us a call again. So I'm going to go ahead and get this up and running for <laughs> us here, and we'll break this one. So you haven't listened to the voicemail. You said, I have right? not heard this, no. Okay, I listened to it, so I had a little bit of a head start on this one, but I'll go ahead and play the voicemail for us now. All right, plenty of time left here in the fourth. Celts up 14, uh, just under nine minutes. As we look to close out uh, another you know, big road win at the end of a back-to-back and a tough West Coast road trip, um, you know, last goal games haven't been as competitive. So what's caught my attention, hoping to discuss, is these Utah Jazz throwback 90s jerseys. <laughs> um, absolute fire Lewis Scott tributes. Um, would love to hear the boys yeah. maybe name top five or if you just want to kind of formally discuss what your favorite 90s throwback jerseys are home our way uh, i'm sure the chubbins would appreciate it all right boys yeah so i was like i'll give you a second to digest so you can start getting the wheels moving but when i first heard this voicemail um i was like excited about it because i've kind of i don't know if i've been on this soapbox on the show but i know with conversations with you um i just think that the nba has just completely lacked all levels of creativity when it comes to like the logos the jerseys and things like that when you look at what some of the old some of the old uniforms and stuff used to be, we used to play, uh, I mean, we go way back. We would play NBA Live 03 and like some of the, even just the throwbacks, even then that you could throw on um, were just like pretty insane. So these jerseys the Jazz had on were obviously like nasty. Um, when I just off the top of my head, I don't necessarily have them in like in any specific order, but like the Timberwolves old jerseys were obviously like fire. The magic they kind of have brought back kind of with those. Some a of those lot of teams have leaned magic, into them, which is good. But um, I think those ones are good. I think mm-hmm. the the whole Pistons logo, like the teal, the, yeah. You, you like those, right? You the teal with the horse, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the red, the teal, like, yeah. Called a lot the, of people they're hate called them, the Pistons. A lot and of they, Pistons they fans hate that that era of jerseys. It's, a, it's, it's an interesting point of controversy with them. But. Yeah, I, I just think like jerseys used to almost represent kind of like what the team was, and it was mm. almost like you had like. It was like a little like artistic in a way. Um, now it's just like, oh, we'll make our jersey blue. Like let's just have like a blue jersey um, or yeah. something like that. So um, the T-Wolves have leaned back into their old jersey. A lot of teams yeah. have gone back, which thank God. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say first of all, like '90s jerseys almost across the board. I would, I again off the top of my head, I doubt there's a team right now that has a better jersey than whatever they wore in the '90s. Like, yeah. So I'd say there almost isn't a bad one. Um, and you know. As testament to this, we could walk upstairs in my house right now and go into my closet where most people have colored shirts. I have throwback NBA jerseys. That's so, another great video call. <laughs> yeah, I might maybe I'll tweet out a. Uh, we can go through all the jerseys between college yes. and pro. Uh, it's it might be almost every team in the NBA. So uh, it's quite the collection up there. But anyway, off the top of my head, I'm sure I'm leaving some out, but I have to go with the Vancouver Grizzlies. Yes, fire. Um, the magic ones you said with the pinstripes. Fire, um, 
the raptors with the giant dinosaur. Oh, yeah, 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 pin, yeah. I like the white ones with the giant dinosaur with the pinstripes. Those yep. are really nice, but all of theirs were pretty good. The purple, like the like straight purple yeah, ones. Yeah, those ones too. too. Um, really, really Purple's nice. Purple is a great color for our Yeah, well, as I say, on that track too, the suns with the big sun, like the Barkley Air suns. Those things were really nice. Um, God, they really let them go, man. The, the, honestly, the Sonics, they had two really nice versions in the 90s, but I am particularly a little more partial to the ones they wore when they made the finals with like the darker green and kind of the big orange basketball. Um, really liked those, the Camp Payton, Detlef Schramm Sonics. And uh, again, before I mention every team in the league, you cannot have <laughs> a talk about 90s basketball aesthetic without bringing up the epic Charlotte Hornets uh, jerseys and their whole everything about starter them. Starter jacket. The Charlotte Hornets starter jacket. So, um, yeah, we could probably do an entire pod. The Philly, the Sixers, as much as I hate Philly. That's how that's how awesome these jerseys are that I absolutely despise the 76ers and I have uh, one of the black Iverson Sixers jerseys with the with the script Oh up there yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. You can't go wrong. Like I said, I could almost go through every team in the league, but damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everything about that is awesome, so great call. Anytime yeah. you make me wax poetic about uh throwback jerseys, especially <laughs> 90s era NBA, uh I'm going to love that call. And uh also Joe on the North Shore you know, sad shout out. We apologize, of course, tonight. His Merrimack Warriors. Mm. Tough defeat um, in the conference championship game. They oh, came up just short. He was probably just enjoying this conversation so much. No, no, no. I, but I, don't, I don't mean to rub <laughs> dirt in the wounds. I mean to say, yeah, you know, no, great job was, by Merrimack. Yeah, yeah, was, Their first year tough. being eligible uh, to make the NCAA tournament. And they came, you know, they fought to the end. Had a couple tough injuries. Um, and, you know, any team that has run zone for eight straight years um, and as a Bayheim disciple teaches his team, uh, you know you're going to have King Chuddy on board. So that, <laughs> the arrow couldn't be pointing more up for Merrimack uh, basketball. I will absolutely be getting out to some games. So shout out Coach Gallo and shout out Joe from the North Shore. Uh, hold your head up high. They're, there's going to be good good days ahead, I think, for that basketball program. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, just moving – I know that, like, Still got to shout out the Celtics. I mean, I just think the Celtics, we've never had like a crazy year, but I do just think there's just something so clean about the white Celtics jerseys. I know that doesn't fly in with the 90s, <laughs> but we are still this podcast. So I don't people think that we're, we're, we're wish we had that. We've always no, had the I've, nice, class, I've always liked that class, about the, the organization, Celtics, um, the association, and even like the Lakers to an extent, too, as much as I hate them. But it's like, yeah. we're, we're like above those, are we're like above crisp. that. Like, we have yeah. our colors and our unis, and they just like. They're so iconic. It's like we we're not gonna fuck with it. The Red Sox, yeah. even too, to extend. It's like these are uniforms. Yeah. They're sick. Like we're not yeah. changing them. Um, yeah. So again, great voicemail, Joe. Anyone that wants to leave voicemails, uh, make sure you go into chuddyscorner.com. You'll see a little like microphone icon on the bottom right. Mm-hmm. You can do that from your cell phone. You can do that from your computer. You can do that from uh, iPad, any type of device. Yep. Go ahead and leave a voicemail for us. We're checking we're, those uh, pretty regularly. Going to be looking at setting connecting that to its own landline number. So that people who oh, don't have access, hopefully, can just call a number, Ooh. leave a voicemail through their phone. That That's way, when you know you've really made it on radio well, uh, when you can just shout yeah, out a number exactly. like that. I can't wait. we got to see if, like, 1-800-CHUDDY or something is available. Yeah. How many letters is CHUDDY? How much are we going to have to pay for, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> more more problems for the sponsor. But, <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Yeah. So, again, thanks, Joe. Hope that that kind of was a good a little throwback. Feel free to tweet at us uh, if anyone out there has their top five of jerseys or anything like that. Um, <laughs> it's it's it is it is just like a great kind of debate to be able to just just kind of throw back and think about stuff like that. So yeah. Um. All right. So that's uh pretty much the game, the recap, the voicemail. What do you have for us uh, for stuff that's going on around the NBA right now? Um, we had a back to back, so yeah, not there's really games 24 hours ago, but not go ahead and a give ton, us. But, I'm looking uh, right now. We got the Bucks getting absolutely waxed by the Kings. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's awesome. T Wolves um, pulled away impressive road win over the yeah. Clippers again. We're at the, I'm at the Chuddy Dome. There's just TVs everywhere in front of us. This yeah. is it's pretty yeah. I don't know how you do the podcast like this. I'd just be getting so we got the big sky the semifinals going on over here too. Forget. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible stuff. But go ahead, uh, get into your the NBA. So sorry. um kind of the most interesting thing that I you know has been I guess a lingering story all year, but has become um I feel like it's being talked about now as we're getting closer to the year, and that is all NBA teams and the 65 game minimum so yeah. donovan mitchell is the latest player to be now ineligible so you look at this list i mean obviously Embiid, julius randall um now donovan mitchell jamal murray and guys who if they don't come back carl anthony towns trey young um there's just a lot of names and a lot of guys who are on the bubble too and you look at the list and I, i'm thinking jalen brown might make another all nba team <laughs> Um, as crazy as that is, and before anyone says Porzingis, I mean, I don't think that's he won't crazy. make the amount of games either, just for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, but it's 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 interesting to think about him with a lot of these awards, and it's kind of crazy how many good players that in normal years would come close and yeah. make it. Um, and especially the one that I thought was crazy, Jamal Murray is going to. Uh, I mean, assuming I think he keeps playing, he will have played in sixty five games, which is how much you need. Mm-hmm. But there's another you know rule in the fine print along with that that you have to play at least twenty minutes in those games, so you can't do anything funky with rest. He's played 65 games. Oh, no. There's three separate games that he's left with an injury and didn't make it to 20 minutes, so he won't be eligible. I don't know if Murray would have made it anyway to make the all-star team. He's obviously one of those guys. Playoff riser, we all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, if he misses out um, on his potentially first ever all-NBA because of that. Yeah, I do feel like it's almost like that rule sort of feels like it's a little, like, overcorrect. I mean, like, I get get why they had the rule, but it does kind of seem a little bit like – like, I don't know, just the sheer volume of people. It's like, are we, like, eventually going to run into a situation where we have, like... Jimmy Butler, another one I forgot to mention, who can't make it. Um, yeah, well, you're going to get 10 guys the, out where you look of, at someone who made it, and you're who like... Who's oh. the Ravens' backup that made the Pro <laughs> Bowl? Yeah, like, are we, like, entering, like, a Huntley situation? Like, with right. some of these, like... Like, who's going to be on, like, second and third team all NBA? It's going to be, like, <laughs> yeah. real... I don't think it's going to be quite And now, what, doesn't that impact... Like the super, so are you gonna have guys. some guy who's just like for some guy, not even yeah, close that, to quite he's a big well. No, well, I think if they now. keep if they don't alter this, the long term effect will be that you'll see guys who are probably clearly should make all NBA teams who will miss it because of the games played, who are veterans who have already mm-hmm. gotten paid, and then yeah, you'll see younger guys who are good but probably not that good will probably get overpaid because suddenly it's like, well, he's young, he's up for a super max, he's a, like. Earned yeah, it. We yeah. kind of have to give it to him. Yeah. But then you're looking and you're like, how far did we give this guy a super max deal? Like, where that it's like he made all NBA, but he's probably like the 30th best player in the league. And yeah. that's kind of how you like fuck up team building. Um, That'd be so. awesome. Well, as long as it's not us. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't, I don't think we're, I think we're, I don't know clear. who we have at this point. You know, uh, yeah, I think we're in the clear. The Jordan that. Walsh jump <laughs> is going to be real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, just something interesting to consider and to watch, and we'll see how this plays out and if they kind of make any tweaks going forward next year because i think there are some people who might be a little bit up in arms um mm. as you said especially for some how it can affect their pay so yep. interesting stuff um but after that i have saved mostly good news uh we had a lot of rough injury news but i'm happy to report steph curry cleared to get back to on court action so it sounds like he'll be back sooner oh. than later um that's obviously great news uh og and Anobi returned tonight for the knicks he was like a plus 28 in 24 minutes they absolutely slaughtered the 76ers so good to see him and brunson back still waiting on randall and uh alperin shangun the big man from the rockets baby Jokic, had an ugly looking injury the other night he was uh looked down bad left on a wheelchair seemed really really bad it's not that bad he's avoided any surgery avoided major knee injury just a badly i guess a severely sprained ankle so he might still miss the rest of this season but again they're basically out of contention there's only a few games okay left. was that a little bit much the <laughs> wheelchair now that we know that he's totally fine well, well totally fine i don't know because like i feel like a severely sprained ankle probably actually like hurts more yeah. like i don't know that's it's still a pretty gruesome injury like, yeah i don't know um it seemed like maybe, he was dead <laughs> Yeah, and it, honestly, if you look at the replay, like that, le- the way that leg bent, like I don't know how his they knee is fucked yeah, up. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, it's obviously good that he did, but I yeah. was, as soon as I saw it, it's like, oh, he avoid major injury. I'm like, I thought he was like dead. Yeah, I thought we were, yeah. Like, oh no, the, re- and the reaction was bad, but uh, again, I, I'm, I don't want to really question it. I'm sure it was no, pretty, yeah, yeah. pretty ugly. Um, and then a couple of little things: Otto Porter Jr. Uh, retiring from the NBA. Uh, good for him, I guess, but also fuck him. For really only having a few good months of good play and health over the last, like, five years of his career. And somehow he got it together for the Warriors in their playoff run. And then to play the best he's ever has against the Celtics. <laughs> never has reached those heights for a winning team before then. Never has after then. And now he uh, gets to retire with a ring. And then that memory uh, burns into my brain. So, frig off. Uh, also went to Georgetown. <laughs> so, frig him. All right. Um, and then Jamal Mosley. The Orlando Magic coach signing a four-year extension today. Just good for him. Shout out to um, Mosley. That was a team that's way ahead of schedule with, you know, their best players being very young. Paulo, just in his yeah. second year, they're kind of clearly too young, clearly lacking, had a hot start, and he's really just kept them right there. They're still in the run for a top four seed. So that defense has not wavered at all. Totally legit. So very well earned. Um, good to see. And just a fun, you know, likable up-and-coming team until they're until they jump the shark and are a legitimate rival, and then we will hate them. Yes, looking forward to that uh, because I do think that Paolo is like going to be like nasty. Some of the, yeah. sometimes when I and you watch, you probably yeah you probably watch more, but sometimes like 
I'll just see some like clips and stuff like that, the stuff that he's doing with the ball. And it's like, it's very scary. It almost reminds me a little bit of like yeah. uh, LeBron just with his, like the size, the stuff you can do with how big he is. So yeah, get that team. We need to lock in a, a few real rings like, now. perimeter creator and a couple of shooters and look out because they have just about everything else. That's a team who I, I would say that if you think of them as like a dark horse to maybe go for like a Trey Young type, uh, I think, Someone like that, some perimeter creator, if, you know, if Cleveland decides to get rid of one of Mitchell or Garland, something like that. But they get a guy like that, and the, with the wings and the defensive players they have. Mm. From Cleveland to Orlando, I'm sure either one of those two would be f- pumped. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Could be a Disney guy. That's true, yeah. That's true. <laughs> no taxes. <clears throat> Very true. You got anything else? That's it. We were on the NBA. Like I said, we were here last night, uh, just not even 24 hours ago. Um, <laughs> I know it's crazy. Yeah, quite the back to back. All right, yeah. so we are not playing it on Thursday. We have the Suns coming back to town, so we just played the Suns a few days ago. Um, I did hear on the way over here that it sounds like Booker will be back yep. for that game. He so played be last playing night. at their full strength. He was back. Last um, night. Obviously, we know Devin Booker's had a pretty um, high scoring affairs before in uh, Boston, <laughs> albeit in some losses. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you kind of have for us? What do, What does he bring? Because we already sort of we did the yep. the preview. Without him, what does having him back in sort of mean for this this matchup? I mean, it's just one more player. Like, you saw how good the two-man game was with Beal and Durant, and you saw how many shots guys like Grayson Allen and Royce O'Neal were missing. Well, now just think, that's going to be Beal. <laughs> like, it'll be Beal, uh, Durant, and Booker probably making yeah. shots, and when they're kicking out to, guy, to like, a safety valve, it's going to be Bradley Beal or Devin Booker instead of uh, Royce O'Neal, Bull Bull, whoever else they were trotting out there that was bricking every shot against Eric Gordon who had another brutal night. Um, so I think it just bumps every guy down Gordon, one more. We talked about him the other day. Was he the one who had like the tweet that was just like, I don't want to be here anymore? About- <laughs> no, no, that was Eric Bledsoe. Eric, all right. It was an Eric. All right. Close. What a time. And it was an Eric in Phoenix too, right? Uh, it was Phoenix where he didn't want to be. Is that where he didn't want to be? I think he tweeted his way out of Phoenix and they traded him for the box, I want to say. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good Sorry tweet. to steal. Extremely Sorry relatable. To- yeah, yeah. I mean, who hasn't just wanted to tweet that out in yeah. the middle of their work day? Yeah, uh, that was that was a famous Eric Bledsoe tweet. But yeah, um, I mean, we saw the Suns. You know, we absolutely battled them. We got their best punch. It's a really good game, and just think they're now adding an All NBA caliber player to the mix. Um, so, like I said, they can just count on all of those role players to have to do a little less and play a little more of their role, and um, hopefully take a little for hopefully for them take a little bit of weight off the stars. So. Uh, We'll be back at home. I'm sure it'll be nice to be back in the garden. It's been a little while. Uh, nice Thursday national TV game. So I assume we'll have a nice little crowd. Probably some juice in the building. Um, you know, usually seem to get up for KD. Hopefully get up for uh, Booker. Booker's another guy who I think I saw he can only miss like two more games. Or he's ineligible for well, all NBA consider too. Consider him so. ineligible. <laughs> One more, more guy or less. So I'm sure he'll be trying to, to play in as many of these games as he can. But uh, this should be a good one after a couple of... Um, a little bit of a lull in the schedule, you could say, with Portland and Utah. That's about as light as it gets. And uh, yeah. now right back to playing, uh, you know, pseudo contender. That is, um, they are in the thick of that race to get in the top six. Uh, that race is super tight right now. Yeah, so the West is... Every game means a ton because you don't not want to be in the playing tournament if you can avoid it. So um, it's going to be a really big game for the Suns. I'm expecting a really, really good and a really fun game. I'm excited. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to being back on Thursday. I'm looking forward to being able to get a good night's sleep tomorrow <laughs> night. Uh, we survived, Chuddy. We survived the. Uh, we had this again. We keep saying we had this penciled in as if it, if the Chuddy's Corner uh, night, nightly recap experiment was ever going to fail. Um, I think the Vegas all betters had it around this time period. So we survived the road trip. We this is early compared back to our to last back. two. Yeah, I know. Actually, I, I couldn't believe it when we were when I was heading back uh, towards here, and you know, it was like. Okay, well, we'll pop in, we'll do a live show. Just turned 12. Yeah, we started the pod. We've ended later uh, on home games. <laughs> yeah. So, well, uh, there we go. Which just means we're seasoned vets. We got this thing down to an absolute science. And we're not sitting in bed on our computers. We're in all the studio f- together. <laughs> That's right. We do it all for you, Chuddy Bring in the energy. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. So, we'll see, see we're back here uh, on Thursday. Celtics get the win tonight. Beat the Jazz, they go. So what do we finish? Three and two on the road trip. So we were just off by two games. We were we, we gave it our best effort. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so the Celtics get the one twenty three one oh seven win uh, against the Jazz and head home for what is this? There's a few games back at home now, right? Uh, one game at a time. Well, yeah, one no game at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not looking ahead. We are not looking ahead. We're only thinking about the Suns. 
All right, everyone at home, uh, thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Uh, make sure you follow at Chuddy's Corner. Make sure you follow at Doug underscore outs on Twitter. Make sure you follow at King Chuddy on Twitter. Shout out Nick Brando, the sponsor. Folks, we'll see you on Thursday. Peace out, Chuddy Outs.